So today I'm going to speak to you about getting married in Jamaica. There are many brides that want to come to Jamaica and get married. Um, there are many brides in Jamaica that want to get married in Jamaica. Um, and they're just not sure what to do. So I'm going to give you a few tips on the procedures to take when planning a wedding in Jamaica. So brides try to make sure that the first thing you do is you hire a wedding planner. And if you don't live in Jamaica and you're coming from another country, you need to hire a destination wedding planner. A planner who has experience in destination weddings. Um, the difference is local brides who live in Jamaica usually get married off property. So they get married on a property that is not affiliated with a hotel. Um, so a local bride, a local wedding planner is okay for that. Um, but most brides that come to Jamaica from other countries, a lot of them get married in a hotel. And if you hire a proper destination wedding planner, they can find a hotel for you, um, choose the right hotel for you that can fit into your budget, go over the packages with the hotel, with the coordinators at the hotel. A lot of these planners at hotels are not wedding certified planners, they're coordinators, they're wedding coordinators. So it's always good to have a wedding planner who can help to coordinate the coordinator. Um, if the destination wedding planner is from Jamaica, they would have contacts in many of these hotels. And a hotel is happy to have a wedding there. So a hotel is not going to turn back a destination wedding that can bring 30 guests, 40 guests, 50 guests, some 100 guests. Could fill 10 rooms, 15 rooms, 20 rooms. So they would allow the wedding planner to come on property and help to make sure that the wedding is done properly. Um, that's very important because a lot of hotels have cookie cutter weddings. You, you choose a package and that's what you get. But if you really want an extraordinary wedding, then hire that destination wedding planner who can coordinate with the hotel, make sure that the suppliers are going to give you what you, what you pay for, um, bring in suppliers if you need to. Now the hotel might charge you extra for that. They won't allow you to bring in food and beverage, things like that, but you can bring in your photographer, your videographer, your flowers, your decorator. They're gonna charge you a little extra for that, but a lot of the hotel properties in Jamaica actually has good photographers and good decorators. Usually they outsource a decorating company. So that's the first thing you need to do is hire a good wedding planner or destination wedding planner. Somebody with experience, not just in weddings, but also events. That's very important because they need to coordinate every part of the wedding. The second thing you need to do when you have done that, you need to start working on your marriage license. If you're getting married in Jamaica and you're just not renewing your vows, but you're getting married, you need to make sure that that wedding planner finds you the right priest who can help you and meet with you, guide you, tell you the cost, and get all the necessary documents to him. You'll need things like passport. You don't need a blood test. Um, if you are divorced, you need to show proof of that. If you're a spouse before died, you need to show proof of that. Um, you try and make sure that there are certain things that you have. You show your birth certificate that you have of age to get married in Jamaica. So it's not that hard to get married in Jamaica. You just need to make sure you get proper documentation done and that the person who is handling it can get you a license as quick as possible. You can pay extra to get it over a quicker period so it doesn't take you too long. Um, 
Now, once you're married in Jamaica, you're married in any country in the world. So it's not is Jamaica recognized in the world. It, it is recognized like every other country. So there are a couple of things that you need to do. And once you get that done, then you need to start looking at your guest list. But look at your budget first because you can't choose a property, get a budget, and you, you don't know where to start. You have to have a guest list because that guest list is going to also be very important to your budget. If you're going to have 20 people, the budget is one. If you're going to have 50 people, that's a different budget. If you're going to have 100 people, what you can't do is go and invite 100 people and you only have a budget for 50 people. You're going to have a problem. So make sure that your guest list is perfect. Invite people who are your friends, people that are going to take part in your life, people that you see on a usually regular basis. Why invite someone you haven't seen in four years? This is your wedding. This is around people that are special to you, your family, your good friends. So choose your guest list correctly. If, you know, I don't think somebody's gonna get upset at you because you never invited them to your wedding. And <clears throat> it's a destination wedding. Remember, people have to fly into Jamaica. They have to book a hotel. They have to get transportation. They have to leave their job. So there's cost that tied to that individual. So when you invite people to a destination event, make sure they know that these are the costs. You're not providing the hotel accommodation. You can help the transportation if you want because there are many transportations on the island that can move them. If you're staying at a hotel, try and get as many guests as possible to stay at that hotel. If you're getting married at that hotel, or if you're staying at that hotel, so you can move all together. So some people might stay at one hotel and get married at another. It just depends on the budget. <coughs> um, so those are, those are the quick, quick tips that I would tell you to start. Um, make sure that when you're hiring suppliers, make sure that you discuss with your planners the experience of those suppliers. Because you want to make sure those people turn up properly and they turn up on time. And don't let your planner deal with your photographer. You deal with your photographer. You make sure that your photographer knows the pictures you need, the shots you need. Does he need you at the, the reception? Does he need you um, when you leave the reception? Does he need you at the ceremony? Do you need him at the, the, um, the party that you might have before? When do you need this photographer? Very important. Do you need that photographer when you're dressing to take some special shots? When you enter in the car, make a list, a shot list. Very important. Make a shot list. You have a rehearsal dinner. Do you need them there? And make that shot list and make sure that your planner has that shot list. Your DJ, make sure that you talk to your DJ. Make sure he has experience. He won't play music that is going to spoil the event. Give him a list of music you want to play. What is the music you want when you're coming down to the ceremony? What is the music you want when you're entering your cocktail party or your reception? What is that music you want to play for your first dance? And then after that, what music do you want to hear for the night? very important you take care of those two things just like how you take care of your dress or your shoes those are very important your photographer your videographer let your planner plan don't step over your planner give your planner your dream and allow your planner to create that dream for you this is your one time usually this is your special moment this is the moment that you've looked forward to, to say, I do. Allow your planner to help you to make that day special. I'm Peter Shakir. I'm a destination wedding consultant. I'm a destination wedding planner, and I'm also an event planner. I'll help you. Check my IG page, my YouTube page. Send me an email. I'll give you some more tips again soon. Have a great day.